Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. This JCO podcast provides observations and commentary on the JCO article, Gemcitabine plus docetaxel versus docetaxel in patients with predominantly HER2 negative locally advanced or metastatic breast cancer, a randomized phase three study by the Danish Breast Cancer Cooperative Group by Dort Lisbeth Nielsen and colleagues. My name is Andrew Seidman and I am an attending physician for the Breast Cancer Medicine Service at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York in the USA. My oncologic specialty is medical oncology breast cancer. Combinations or single agents, crossover or no crossover, considering chemotherapy strategies in metastatic breast cancer. The combination of paclitaxel and gemcitabine is a U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved doublet for the management of metastatic breast cancer and is listed on the guidelines of the National Comprehensive Cancer Center Network. This indication came after a phase three trial involving 529 patients with anthracycline pretreated metastatic breast cancer were randomized to the doublet of paclitaxel plus gemcitabine or GT versus paclitaxel alone as first-line therapy. Despite a higher response rate, longer time to progression, and overall survival for the combination as compared to paclitaxel monotherapy, there has not been widespread use of this two-drug combination. Notably, two frequent criticisms are, one, the lack of pre-planned crossover from paclitaxel to gemcitabine in the paclitaxel arm, that is, how do the two agents administered sequentially fare as compared to the combination? And two, the observation that weekly paclitaxel is superior to the every three weekly paclitaxel control arm in this trial. In the present study, Nielsen and colleagues of the Danish Breast Cancer Cooperative Group randomized 367 patients with largely HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer and prior anthracycline for early stage disease to receive either docetaxel, 100 milligrams per meter squared every three weeks, or docetaxel, 75 milligrams per meter squared every three weeks, plus gemcitabine, 1,000 milligrams per meter squared on day one and day eight every three weeks. The statistical plan hypothesized a 50% increase in time to progression, the primary endpoint, for the combination over docetaxel and assumed a median time to progression for docetaxel of five months. There was no crossover plan from docetaxel to gemcitabine, and only 1.8% of docetaxel-treated patients actually received gemcitabine as their next chemotherapy. In univariate analysis, the median time to progression for the doublet was 10.3 months versus 8.3 months for docetaxel with a non-significant p-value of 0.06. There were no differences in response rates or overall survival. More patients experienced grade 3 or 4 thrombocytopenia with the doublet, 16% versus 0.6%. More neuropathy was noted with docetaxel monotherapy, 16% versus 5%. The authors concluded that the addition of gemcitabine failed to demonstrate any clinically meaningful benefit. One historical important precedent for this trial is the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group 1193 trial, reported in this journal by Sledge and colleagues in 2003. In that landmark trial, no advantage in overall survival or quality of life was noted for the combination of doxorubicin and paclitaxel as first-line chemotherapy 
as compared to the sequential administration of the single agents in either order. The response rate and median time to progression for the doublet were greater compared to either single agent as first-line therapy, while the high response rate for the anthracycline taxane combination has led to its use in the neoadjuvant setting, its use in the palliative treatment of metastatic breast cancer remains rather uncommon. More and more, patients with metastatic breast cancer receive multiple lines of chemotherapy. In addition, there is the observation that subsequent therapies can have an impact on overall survival, as demonstrated in the recent phase three trial of aribulin known as EMBRACE. In an effort to better understand how the valuable components of taxane, gemcitabine, and capecitabine may be employed in metastatic breast cancer, I recently led a phase three trial comparing the doublets of docetaxel plus gemcitabine, or GD, and docetaxel plus capecitabine, or CD, as first-line therapy for metastatic breast cancer, where patients with, were pre-assigned to cross over to the alternate single agent at the time of disease progression or limiting toxicity. No differences in response rate, time to progression, or overall survival were noted in this trial. This trial also confirmed the prior study of Chan and colleagues demonstrating the lack of significant difference in efficacy between GD and CD with similar toxicity experience. Um, that is more non-hematologic toxicity with capecitabine and docetaxel and more hematologic toxicity with gemcitabine and docetaxel. Finally, a recently reported study of the Central European Cooperative Oncology Group did in fact randomize patients to concomitant docetaxel plus gemcitabine versus sequential docetaxel followed by gemcitabine. Unfortunately, due to poor recruitment, only 100 of the pre-planned 430 patients were accrued. No difference in efficacy was observed between concomitant and sequential treatment, although the trial was underpowered. So where does this leave us? We're not prolonging time to progression by six or 12 months when combining cytotoxic agents in this disease. The collective body of data reviewed herein suggests to me that further trials comparing combinations to single agent cytotoxic chemotherapy are likely to be of low yield and should be a low priority for clinical research. Indeed, most recently, a recent randomized trial of paclitaxel plus carboplatin versus docetaxel plus gemcitabine versus weekly paclitaxel monotherapy revealed equivalent time to progression and quality of life. Single agent weekly paclitaxel was not inferior to either combination regimen. What goes around comes around. All of this does not exclude the possibility that in the future we may be able to select patients who may benefit most from specific combination regimens based on molecular markers. Until that time, many clinicians select patients for combination chemotherapy based on younger age, fewer comorbidities, shorter relapse-free interval from adjuvant chemotherapy, more rapid tempo of disease progression, and or the presence of significant and often symptomatic visceral metastatic disease. The choice of sequential single agent versus combination chemotherapy remains as much in the domain of the art of medicine as the science, as it should be. This concludes this JCO podcast. Thank you for listening. For more original research, editorials, and review articles, please visit us online at jco.org. This production is copyrighted to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Thank you for listening.